It's a lovely morning here again. Um, we're walking on the Cotswold Way and uh, we're going to just veer off and head towards um, Cotswold Tower. Well, we're walking the Cotswold Way again this morning. Lovely morning here in the Cotswolds. Lambs and sheep around. Lovely to see the lambs and the sheep. Nice to see the little ones. Well, I'm feeling we won't get too close to them before they decide to just move on, but looks as if they're probably used to uh, people wandering around. Mother is enjoying breakfast this morning and the little ones can't make much out of me that's probably me hat that's what you can't make much out of lovely look at that and mum having a quiet five minutes breakfast oh you can't make much out of me Hey? Oh, okay. We'll see you later. Bye. Well, we're getting high up now. Begin to see across towards Broadway Village. If you're not inspired as an artist by this, then you never will be. Right, we've got another gate to negotiate which is not too difficult just lift the lever push and we're through onwards and upwards well there's Broadway Village well town really Quite, quite a large village, small town. Well, here we are having uh, a short break. I suppose we're at the midway point before we get to the tower itself. But we're overlooking the beautiful Broadway village and surrounding countryside it's a lovely day up here no wind uh, perfect day for a walk really and uh, no doubt a sketch or two at some point we'll see now for those of you that are looking at my watercolors made easy if you notice I did mention cloud shadows you can see how areas are dark and then all of a sudden they come into a light area and it's all very soft edged it's not like a shadow see how bright that is and then I move back into a cloud shadow area and all of a good sudden morning. you end up with good morning, good morning. you end up with um, cloud shadow over the land and that you need to think about if you were to be painting a wider landscape. <laughs> well, there is a super example of a cloud shadow. Light in the foreground, dark as you go away into the distance. And then all of a sudden it springs into sunlight again. And we can actually see a way as far as the Malvern Hills which is the far distant hills there that we can see right in the distance well we're coming to another gate and I've got a feeling and I can see the tower in the distance there we are Broadway Tower another five minutes and we will be there very nice 
Okay, well we've finally made it and as you can see it stands there very majestic on the top of the the hill. Um, now anyone looking to paint this really um, you can get a nice atmospheric feel with a backlight because it's more or less in silhouette but I personally would probably unless you're looking for a real atmospheric scene I would actually go round a bit so we've got some of it at least in sunlight so um, that's what I'm going to do I'm going to go up there and uh, have a look for an appropriate uh, um, aspect well this is the sort of aspect I was talking about um, you can actually get a three dimensional feel to a building like that then um, you know perhaps a little later as the sun comes around it could improve um, but uh, it's getting there this is also a good view bearing in mind we have the path leading the eye towards the building um, just need the sun to come around a bit more a bit more shadow on the right but that would be more or less quite almost a perfect subject now this one could even be said to be a better view bearing in mind you've got all the distance lovely clouds path coming in from the right uh, yep lovely bit of distance as well Well, I'm on my descent now, down back into the village of Broadway. Whoops, sorry about that. And uh, got all my material collected. Uh, looking forward to try and capture this, whether it's today or when we get back to my studio in Essex. Well I've just arrived back from my lovely walk to um, the Broadway Tower um, and I'm uh, going to put just a quick sketch down onto my watercolour paper while it's all clear in my head really. Uh, I've done the drawing so it's basically a simple drawing and uh, just got to get the clouds right and um, I'll show you how it's done. Well try to anyway. Well there's the drawing, very first thing we've got to do is put some base washes down so we take a large mop brush, put my water down on the ground and uh, we had plenty of uh, large billowing clouds so that's the first thing we've got to do, let's just damp um, my paints, first thing you need to do particularly as we're in full sunlight here, just need to damp the colours to get them uh, freshened which is um, quite a normal thing for me to do so they should freshen up and not be that difficult to get out of the uh, the palette there we go nicely fresh right well sun's quite strong so let's see if I can get the right colours down. Um, let's just damp an area first. There's an area there we need to damp and an area there. Quite billowing clouds so they need to be gently attended to. Now that could be the top so, so we've got a lot of blue here so let's go in with a mix of Windsor blue and cobalt blue that was that sort of day I think just like the cobalt for cloud, for sunny skies it's a cloud there see we're getting a soft edge there we'll have hard edges possibly around the tower although perhaps a soft edge around there might be a little more appropriate 
don't make it too uniform you know got a cloud there we don't cloud above both of those areas then another cloud there so that's really the base of the blue just put in a little stronger blue you remember it will dry somewhat darker so let's just pick up a real strong blue there a little blue there now clean the brush take a bit of moisture off now we can tease away and get some of these hard edges to actually go soft don't want all of them soft but certainly some of them like that let's just soften that there as well nice bit of hard edge there not too concerned about that i think although having said that let's go soft around the top of the tower don't that hard edge to take away that's better that to me that's a bit more of an idea of the clouds right now for the clouds i'm going to use Payne's gray so windsor and newton Payne's gray so it um it's got a bit of bluey tint to it and i seem to remember it's a lovely billowing cloud that went behind the building just watch that sort of tight on the building and sort of like tape it away a bit just go pick up the side of that building tape it away and then there was another one there um, this was possibly part of that one here we are so now we're going to introduce a bit of that to the top there just pull that away yeah a little bit damp should have left that but there you go that's the way watercolor painting is just going to soften that a little bit there we go that's that's tidied that up good there we go soften that just a little hard edge there nothing too much a little bit there Bit there right now we get the they're the, more or less the underside but then we get the tops of some more clouds that are quite sort of yellowy greeny yellow really and these can be slightly soft edged or hard edged dependent on your um, of how you feel at the time like that then I'm softening the tops of those then there we are look at that that seems to be quite quite a nice thing to do and I'm gonna just put in a little bit of wispy stuff around the top there where it's just dry because that will also help to give us a bit of balance within the clouds you know a bit of a bit of over painting here a bit of um, just one or two little areas of white just left not concerned about that bring that in lovely look at that lovely cloud sort of formation there and, and it only happens with the paint can't actually paint that if you get what I mean it it happens as you paint so it's not always um, you know the sort of thing that you can sort of say well I'm going to do that the same next time because it'll be something totally different next time and as we go away into the distance we do get a bit of dull yellow a bit of uh, dull blue just blend that up as well there we go look at that secondary cloud sh secondary cl shadow up the top and that runs through lovely and then in the far distance we actually had a little bit of red a bit of sort of i don't know a bit of a nice cadmium red just blended with that because it's the start then of the distant hills very light there we are that's good brilliant i like the look of that and then of course we get the distant hills and they are not too much water on this cobalt blue and i'm going to use light red for my distant hills mainly cobalt blue to start with and that will drop into that damp area very nicely and blur that's what i'm looking for looking for a blurred sort of feel to that 
It's quite linear, quite straight. And in places it's going to be a little bit darker. So a little bit stronger colour. A bit more red, a bit more blue to give the stronger touches along that distant border. But not too dark as you get to the building. The building I want to stand out in clear relief. So there you go. That's, that's, that is pretty pretty good. See where I've been a little lighter I've headed towards the building. I've got a lovely bit of misty run back. Lovely. Look at that. See that misty run back and now I'm just going to soften that because that gives us the bottom edge of that cloud. And you can then introduce a bit of that that side. That's better. And see where I'm now painting up to get the bottom edge of that cloud. It would be nice just to have a little cloud coming in that side. That's it. Just to hold in that. That's nice. Oops, don't do too much. Colin, not too much please. And a little bit that side just to say that that's extending. Good. Okay. That's excellent stuff. Right, now the next area will be the middle distance. Well, we've got some hedging there and it was pretty much burnt sienna. But of course, it's got to be toned back with cobalt blue because it doesn't want to be too powerful. But when it's nice to be a little bit perhaps lighter than the background, yeah, put a bit of raw sienna with it. That'll lighten it up. There we go. And this is the hedging that's running along the more foreground area. There may be a little bit here, just to balance, so it's not all one-sided. There we go. Look at that. It's around the tops of those figures. Pulling right up. There we go. And it runs away, finishes right on the edge of the tower there. Then it runs away into the distance, which is really not that far away. You know, that's the key to it, really. Um, and this will have a little more blue in it. We'll get almost a burnt umber feel to that in the end. Just a little bit more blue. So we've got the feel of sort of more foreground hedging and trees there one or two little touches there and there not too much one or two here but they're further away and we finish along that bottom edge and that bottom edge was quite cleanly cut so let's run the brush down there and get that nice and clean there we are let's just allow that to dry Good, well that's coming along very nicely. Now I've added, popped in a little bit of very weak raw sienna there. And I've introduced a bit of light red. May even introduce a touch more. See where there's that streak of light red there in the foreground. It really pulls that track nearer to you. You can see how distant it is there and how much foreground. And the tapering of course all helps that, that general feeling. Now the grass is very much lighter. Sunlit, really. So I'm going to use the Windsor Blue. With the Cadmium Lemon. We want plenty of Cadmium Lemon in that first. There we go. So it's really, really yellow to start. Nice yellow feel and quite weak. Let's see how, yeah. Let's just even be weaker and more yellow than that. Surprising how light we want to be with this. So we've got plenty of water in the mix there. We, that's more like. Remember with watercolor, you can keep an edge there because I think it's still lightly damp. 
and just keep an edge there. If we get a bit of bleed in, we do, but we've got figures there. That goes around. And there is a small wall there, it gets slightly larger. A bit of bleed there, I'm not too concerned about. And just keep an edge there. There we are. So that's that lovely lemon yellow. Now I'm introducing a little burnt sienna to it. That will make it deeper in tone and a bit more local. Gives me a more local green instead of that rather sort of foreground green there. And I'm just softening that edge. I'm going to actually soften that edge and allow that to run in. Not so much on the top, it's just softened in one place, but here I will. And then we just add a bit more blue and a bit of cadmium now. That will give me a more local green. See how it's more earthy? It's leaving a bead of white there. Don't want that. Let's just soften it as it goes there. There we go. But not up the top. That's a good idea. There we are. Just thought of that. And then as we come into the foreground, more cadmium, a bit more blue. And lovely feeling of depth then, a bit of rough markings there. And although it is a sort of like a nice grass area, going to introduce a bit of burnt sienna here and there. Just a, I want a bit of uneven feel to that. That's more or less one straight wash. So um, we'll have a bit of cloud shadow there. So a bit more blue and a little bit more brown. A little bit of Payne's Grey gone in there. Just to help darken it off. Because while it's still damp, I want a cloud shadow. So it's soft edged. Remember I speak about cloud shadows. Soft edged there. And it will just run across that path. We'll pop that in shortly. It helps to light up the tower, in effect. And some really dark stuff. A lot of people, I'm very often accused of going too dark, quite often by fellow artists. Um, but uh, there you go. That's my style, I'm afraid. Just feel it adds a little bit of depth to a picture. But we will see at the final result. Okay, well I have moved on very quickly. And what I've done, I've painted the tower in its raw sienna state. Then I've used a damp brush and damped down the centre of the tower. Then I've used the shadow colour down the left hand side of the tower and that's blurred round and it gives you that lovely sort of rounded sort of turret shape just soften that just a touch to them towers and I've done the same on, on both towers then I've just gone straight in there with with a wash of colour got a bit of bleed back because it got a bit of damp on there and a little bit down the edge there under the Juliet balcony and uh, ooh, there is another area that will require some shadow and that is the underside and inside that window there window there and that window there because they are white framed windows and that's all you need to do to create the lovely feeling of a rounded tower. Okay, now we need to put in figures. Um, I'm going to use a bit of red for, I always like a bit of red for one of the figures, which is that one there. Set. Uh, they're not that visible, but um, doesn't really make that much difference. So I'm going to use a blue now for one of the figures there. Not too much. It's a little bit too much on the on the brush. Just take that away. More solid colour, not too much water. I'm outside in the garden as you can hear. There we are. That's another figure. And then the other figure is going to be different blue. 
So I've used cobalt for one figure. I'm going to use Windsor Blue for the smaller little figure there. Just like that. And then I'm going to pick up a bit of dark colour with that Windsor for jeans, trousers, whatever. And that just sits down there like that. And then these figures will be just in silhouette, really. And a couple of figures having a bit of a chinwag there. Maybe another figure, I wouldn't mind. Another figure just looking up. Oh, actually looking down into the valley. There we are with a youngster. So you can dot your figures around wherever you wish, really. You know, um, uh, clusters of threes and twos are useful, um, but there's two there, so I'm going to have three here, and it's going to be like a family, I think. There you go. And then all we need to do then is to wash a bit of dark bluey green on the undersides, so just to make them sit onto the ground, really. And with the sun coming from the right, we would get a very weak shadow running under there, like that. Going that way, we'd have a, a shadow there, shadow there, shadow there, and a shadow there. And then what I like to do is just soften those shadows a little so they're not too prominent. They sneak away. That's probably drawn it too far so let's um correct that there we are just loosen that off there we are and then just a little bit there like that and draw that away good they sit on the ground now as opposed to anywhere else then we've got a little bit of the, this dark color just picking up on this bit of faint bit of hedging um stone walling and you will see dark at the base you've got the sort of like the soldier stones on the top that will be light so we need those to be light and the shadow gets less and less as you go away into the distance so eventually it's all pretty pretty gets lost don't want to go over the figures there you go um we're getting there. We are getting there very, very good. And then, of course, here, take a little bit off the brush, not too much on here, because we've got the sun there, so we're going to get a little bit of a lip to that grass, and that will get larger as you come forward. And then you're going to have a shadow from that wall. But, of course, that wall extends beyond there then and disappears down the horizon. Um, pretty much, pretty much getting there. Just want a bit of texture here for some local trees. Just going down behind winter trees, autumn trees. Actually a spring, but um, they're the sort of trees that I'm looking for. And another slightly taller one there. Just helps to hold in that left hand side, I think. Um, just use the side of a dry brush to create that and just a bit of artistic license here now I'm going to add one there don't think there was any but just think it all helps to give let's go a little bit darker right in the base there, there we go that just shows a bit of sunlight and a bit of depth good I don't think there's too much more to be done to that. Well, there you have it. I've pulled in a little closer um, just to uh, show you the... Um, I think I've got the tone right. There we go. Um, just to show you the overall composition, really. But um, that is Broadway Tower um, on the outskirts of Broadway in the Cotswolds. Um, if you've enjoyed watching that then please subscribe to my youtube channel click the link bottom right hand corner and then you'll be updated on everything else 
that I um, post. So happy painting, and if you get a chance, have a go at that one. Thank you for, for watching.